This year, Rishi Sunak says, we'll get an election. But his opposition isn't just Labour. The Liberal Democrats are grasping for a number of Tory seats. And on the right, he's being squeezed by the Reform Party. Let me now introduce Reform UK's party leader, Richard Tice. He hasn't got the name recognition of the party's honorary president, Nigel Farage, but he has now got a 10% support in the polls. The Tories are terrified. And with that, a warning. There's no special deals. We stand in every single seat in England, Scotland and Wales. Richard Tice warned of Starmageddon under Labour and announced their own policies, raising the level at which income tax is paid, scrapping net zero carbon emissions targets and a one-in-one-out system for immigration. Policies, he said, that have already caught the eye of some sitting Tory MPs. At some point, some of them are going to say, we're in the wrong party. And have some of them already said that we've had, we've had a number of interesting discussions, very pleasant, very genial. I'm obviously going to keep those confidential. I won't confirm or deny anything. But it's not just but you, MPs, it's But you are saying that those conversations have happened. Uh, of course they have happened. With MPs? Uh, with MPs. <laughs> <laughs> Posing for the cameras at the last election, nowhere to be seen today, though. Nigel Farage, we're told, is still tossing up what role he'll play. Pollsters and Tory MPs say the Farage factor would sway things dramatically. In Hartlepool, though, where the party leader is running, Richard Tice isn't a household name. Do you know who that man is? Uh, no, no, sorry, I don't. His name's Richard Tice. He's from the Reform Party. Have you heard of the Reform Party? No. no. Do you know who that is? No, I don't. Do you know who that is? Oh, yes, um, Farage or whatever his name is. Yeah, Richard Tice. Well done, you're the first one today. All right, yeah. Reforms say they are taking voters from the Conservatives and Labour. Pollsters say it's the Tories who stand to lose most. For every voter they lose to the Labour Party, they're also losing one to reform at the moment, and that trend has been going in one direction. So we've seen reform double their vote share on this time last year. And I think the big question for Rishi Sunak is whether that continues and whether that gets worse if Farage returns. And ultimately, does that end up benefiting Labour more than anyone else? I think the ultimate beneficiaries will be Labour, even if Labour do lose some of their own voters to reform as well. If you get a few MPs, would you be willing to go into coalition with the Conservatives to keep them in Downing Street? Look, we get, the more MPs that we get, then the more influence we will have. Look at them, so hear what we say. Look, what, what, is an, what it is an absolute uh, guarantee is we're not doing a deal with the Tories before the election. But that after the certain. election? Well, let's wait and see what people vote. I want the Tories to be ousted. They have to be punished for the failure, for the way they've broken Britain. Wait a minute. You've just gone from, well, we might think about a deal after the election. No, I didn't say that. But... I didn't say that. I said they've got to be punished. They've got to be ousted. So you want them punished. You want them to be ousted. But then after they've been ousted, you might help put them back in. That's not, no, that's not what I said. What I'm saying is people have got to vote for us. They've got to vote for Reform UK. Okay, so tell me no. Possible. Tell me right now that you wouldn't do a deal with them. I'm, look, I'm focusing on before the election, let's hope we get as many MPs as possible. Look, I'm more optimistic than you. We've got to go, you've got to be an optimist in politics, particularly in the new year. You've got to go for it and that's what we're doing. It's not a no, gotcha. <laughs> the last lot to do that deal. Today I'm launching Ed Davies' Tory removals. Say Tory seats in the South and South West are theirs for the taking. With reform and the actual official opposition Labour, the assault on the Conservative Party is advancing from every angle. Well, with me now is Rosie Campbell, who's Professor of Politics at King's College London. How much of an electoral force do you think that Reform UK is, with or without Nigel Farage? Well, I think they could have a significant impact. I, I think it's very unlikely that they're going to break through and have any significant number of MPs. I mean, without Nigel Farage, we'd be very surprised if they get any MPs at all. But Sorry, but do you think he might win a seat? I, I, think, I just think politics is so unpredictable that a very high-profile character like Nigel Farage, I wouldn't want to put bets on him not being able to win a well-targeted seat. Although he's tried several times. And Again. But... Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I, I interrupt your flow. Yeah. I think the key thing is that how they're going to divide the Conservative vote. Because already, um, you know, without Nigel Farage, they are taking away seats 
by taking away votes or supporters from, from the Tories in the red wall constituencies that they would really dearly like to hang on to. So I think that's going to be the main factor and I think that they can have that impact with or without Nigel Farage. We'll come back to the red wall in just a second, but if the Tories move further to the right to try and you know, dampen the effect of Reform UK, will that, ha will that work or will it leave them more vulnerable to Labour? I think it's a really interesting question because I think that's what the pressure from reform is, decide, is, is designed to do. It's designed to try and shift the Tories to the right. But the Tories have got to fight in two fronts in this election. They've also got to think about the blue wall and those traditionally safe Conservative seats in the South East, in Surrey, that they are under threat from the Liberal Democrats. So that makes it very, very difficult. They're sandwiched in between in this mm. way. It's kind of squishy rishy, isn't yes. it? He's, <laughs> he's squished in between the, yeah. the Lib Dems in the Southern Blue Wall and Labour in the, in, you know, by reform actually. Northern Red Wall. So, so, I mean, how much of a sort of pincer movement is that? How, how detrimental do you think that will be? I think it's, it could be catastrophic. And I think I'm interested in what the strategy of the Reform Party is. Is it about trying to set an agenda, agenda for the future, which actually makes the Conservative Party after the next election shift much further to the right? So is it about saying anti-net mm. zero, really making immigration a really key issue, and actually not so focused on what happens at this election, but really focused on what UK politics looks like going into the future? Sort of skin in the game for a future Conservative leadership contest. Mm, indeed. Um, I mean, obviously, their previous incarnation used to be the Brexit Party. It's now, it's about, well, some of the issues you just talked about, net zero, it's about tax, immigration, culture wars too, isn't it? And I think that's, the idea of wrapping all of these themes together is quite key to the appeal, because to some extent Brexit, you know, has massively fallen down the political agenda, and yet it's become associated with this kind of anti-woke politics. So I think that branding is quite tactical and probably quite sensible on the part of the Reform Party. We saw a few uh, women questioned in Paul's piece there and they didn't know who Richard Tice was. Um, is reform appealing more to men than women? Absolutely. And traditionally, the Brexit Party, UKIP, about two thirds of their voters have been men, traditionally slightly older men. And that appeal remains this day. Mm. I mean, you talked about the potential sort of catastrophic impact, to use your word, of reform. Um, in, is, I mean, some of the recent polls put their support as high as 11 percent. but. The general election is still going to be a two-horse race, isn't it? Oh, indeed. But I think what matters is that the Conservative Party needs to try and hold together a coalition of voters. And so the, the breakthrough in the Red Wall, those 31 seats that they want to hang on to as many as they possibly could, actually, they, they're going to lose a greater number of those if reform are actively securing that 10, 11 percentage points of the vote. So, yes, it's going to look, I think, when we look at the final tally, largely like a Conservative Labour race. But actually what happens in those individual constituencies is going to really matter with the other parties. Mm -hmm.